Right, so we're back for another ThinkPad video. And this time I've actually got a ThinkPad that I want to fix up for myself. This is an X240. So I'm going on a holiday in September and my main laptop is a T440, which is obviously quite a bit bigger. I wanted something that was smaller so it had better battery life because obviously smaller screen, less backlight. My T440 is now also an i7, so I needed it to last a four hour flight and I wanted something that was smaller to go on an airplane and stuff. So X240 it was. So this was £40 on eBay in the UK and it was one of them things where is this a good idea or not? Because the eBay seller had listed it as uh, works uh, intermittent screen dim screen. And I'm like, well, what could that be? So I pretty much assumed I was going to have to replace a screen on this, but I did not really buy a screen or anything in advance just because I wanted to see the machine in first. It might have been a bad motherboard or something. I didn't want to bother if that was the case. So I am mean, going to try and. I don't know how much of this is going to be in focus, by the way, because I can't see the camera screen from down here. So I'm going to put the laptop in a weird angle like this so you can see this. It's clear there's been drop damage. There's a crack near the charging connector, so I assume the charger was plugged in when it was dropped. If we look on the bottom, there's also a missing screw hole. They've, they've literally managed to break one of the screw holes in the drop. So. That's the first things I saw when I first got this machine. So I opened it up and the screen isn't smashed. So one of the things I like about the X240 that the T440 doesn't have is a plastic bezel and screen. So because I've got long fingernails, I could just pull that off. pretend like I'm some sort of super powerful super being but really it's just um plastic clips and I don't think I broke any that time what a relief anyway inside we have the screen and the screen isn't screwed in and here's where the problem was the screen cable fall now it well it was in there but it was half out so I've reseated it, just make sure it's still in there, yeah, and it worked fine. Now that being said, it is a 1366 by 768 screen, so it's probably not worth keeping in there, but for now I'm going to leave it in there because it's working. I'm not going to spend money on a 1080p screen because A, my eyesight is pretty crap to be perfectly honest with you. And this is a 12 inch machine and I'm not going to be able to get this bezel back on. <laughs> um, yeah, 1080p at 12 inches is going to be quite painful because I like to do 100% scaling. Otherwise there's no point in putting a bloody 1080p screen in if it's going to scale everything to make it to like it's on a 1366 by 768 I remember when I put the 1080p panel in my T440 and I was like, why is everything look so bloody big? because of the default Windows 10 scaling and what the hell uh, I hate the so here's a good discussion topic what's better stickers or plastic bezels see the T440 has a plastic not a plastic bezel a sticker I think in terms of ease of re-putting on the sticker probably wins it's not got little plastic clips to go wrong. But in terms of taking it on and off many times, well obviously the plastic bezel wins there because I can take this off whenever I want. Without risk of like the, the sticker losing the t-shirt and stuff. See I bought the wrong screen for my T440, it's a glossy screen instead of matte. And the only reason I haven't actually fixed that is because I, I'm too scared to take the sticker off. Because if I can't get a replacement sticker, I'm stuck with a weird non-fitting thing. Ah, uh, bloody bezels. 
Yeah, getting all the plastic tabs to connect on this is a real pain in the butt, especially at the bottom. See, there's a gap here. There we go. You do feel like you've got to snap the screen every time you do these. It's not just ThinkPads, but anyway. So I bought this for £40, and I thought I was on a pretty good deal because the keyboard was back there. I was like, yes, I could put it in my T for 40 and I was like, okay, it's got a new trackpad. I'll just put a mod trackpad in because I did that on my T440. But the keyboard's totally different design. It On the T440, it's got like a panel that slides up here. Nope, it's one with the chassis. Thank you, Lenovo. And even the bloody trackpad is smaller. It's like, really? You could have fit a T440 trackpad in there, but no, you've got this weird, slightly smaller one, which means I'm stuck with this, because I can't find a mod trackpad for the X240. I can't even find an X250 trackpad. So, yeah. So we fixed the screen issue, or at least I did off camera a long time ago, so let's go to the bottom then. The machine does work, no motherboard issues or anything. So we can get inside the bloody thing now which is pretty easy. Just got to be careful not to break the plastic tabs at the back there. Now inside this is a pretty damn stock configuration. It's got a 4 gig RAM module, that's a module that I actually added that came out of my T440 when I upgraded it to 8 gigs and then 12 gigs. And yeah, no internal battery, no drive came with it. It's got the i5-4200U, which that's like rubbish. That's the lowest end CPU I think you could buy for this machine that's not an i3. It's like the base, base CPU. It's not V-Pro or anything. It's, yeah. It's basically identical to the 4300U though. It just lacks the V-Pro features and I don't use them. So that don't bother me. What does bother me is the 802.11n Wi-Fi card. I would have preferred the AC version, even though I don't have AC Wi-Fi at home. I might find AC Wi-Fi when I'm out and about, so... Yeah, I'm probably going to upgrade that in the future. I'm not going to now. And there's no internal modem. I do have a Sierra Air Prime around here somewhere that would work in here, but it doesn't work in the UK, so... Not worth putting that in either. Now the internal design on the X240 is just mind-bogglingly weird. It's like you think they would have copied the T440 pretty much identically, but nope, it is totally different in here. Literally everything's different. It's just weird. Very weird design. Like this FIU number as you can see here, that's the keyboard you're looking at. That's the bottom of the keyboard. And it's not like it's any thinner than the the T440. It's actually slightly thicker, I think. And then it's like there's a speaker here and a speaker here, and yeah, it's just a bit weird. I was hoping they would have copied the T440 design a bit more, but no, it's just kind of messy in here. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about actually making some upgrades to this because I can actually do a few things right here, right now. First thing, what the bloody hell is this? Like, seriously, what the hell? If you're going to buy a brand new laptop, put the internal battery in as an option. I don't even think it was that expensive, brand new. It was probably like a £20 extra here in the UK. Add the bloody internal battery for £20. It gives you an extra two hours of runtime. It's like a no-brainer. I got this on eBay for use for like fifteen pounds. It's I don't think it's in very good health. I think it's got eighteen watt hours out of the twenty four watt hours, but that's still likely to give me a good hour of battery life, which is great. No one ever complains about an extra hour of battery life. Also, Lenovo, why the hell have you done this? This is the same sort of battery as in T four forty. So why did you make this weird half-width battery thing? I don't have the one for the T440 here, but the T440 had sank just like this, but it went all the way over here. You've, you've made an extra part that costs more money 
to make because you got it costs more money to make two different products than it does to make just one product and the full width one would work in both and also because this is only half width it only has the one screw which means I had to scrounge through a bag of screws that came with my X220 which came with a bag of like here's a bunch of screws I don't know where they came from I didn't use any of the bag of screws so I've just got a bunch of screws these are longer than the ones that should be in here but you know what I can't be asked that'll work I'm sure as long as the battery doesn't bend around as it's moved about that's the main thing and yeah that's in there pretty solid so let's see how this cable is supposed to run around these pins yeah, let's connect to on the motherboard. Plug it in just like that. Um, yeah. Oh, would you look at that? We've instantly put an hour of battery life on it. Does it boot? Probably not because these machines disable the internal battery when you remove them. Oh, it does. Would you look at that? F1, 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 F1. Is it frozen? I think I've killed it. Come on. I'm going to have to blow out some serial numbers, but... Yeah, we've got the 4200U CPU there. 4 gigs of RAM, I'll probably try and get 8 gigs of RAM in here. And we do have a Windows 8 Pro license on here, which is great. So I can install Windows 10 and it will work just fine. Um, I have already updated the BIOS on this machine. I think that's actually the date that I updated it. Because I don't think they released the BIOS version for this in February this year. I'm pretty sure that's the date that I updated it because uh, maybe not. I don't know. All I know is I updated this already because we can turn this off now. I installed an SSD. The Intel 545S. Yeah, I've never used an Intel SSD before. See, I always usually go with a crucial SSD. Or sometimes I've used Samson. I think once I used a light on. And I've used some weird ones in other people's computer builds. I've used an SK Hynix. I've used SanDisk before. But I've never used Intel. So I thought I'd try an Intel. And now that I've just said that, I know that's actually a lie. Because I've got a 180 gig Intel in my X220. But I think I bought these two SSDs at the same time. So yeah, it's 256 gigs, which is probably more than enough for this. I have 275 gigs in my T440, and I was ideally looking to match that 275 gig, but for some reason, the 275 gig crucial drives, they go in and out of fashion quite quickly. One day, you can get them for next to nothing. The next day, they're demanding a great premium, and they cost more than a 480 gig SSD. That's the way the world works. So here's design stupidness again for the X240. The SSD connects with a cable. I don't like that because it's kind of a mixed bag. It's good in one regard in that if this cable ever breaks or the connectors break, you can obviously replace it. If it's soldered to the motherboard like on the T440, you can't replace that. But at the same time, if I now plug this drive in, I don't have a caddy for this yet. I have bought a caddy, but it's coming from China, so I probably won't get it till September. And I'll have to put it in the last minute or something, because, you know, China takes 20 million months to arrive. So the SSD is now plugged in, but, I mean, it's not going to sit there, is it? But I actually have a solution for this, and it's called... It's, it's the wrappers for some uh, Starburst. Because 
that's what we British do. We use sweets. See, I've done this actually before. My mum's got an elite book. And I've done this exact same thing with a hard drive. Because I don't want to buy a caddy. You see? And then you put that on top. You might think I've lost it. But what that does is it pushes the drive up. So now if I put the bottom case on, that drive would be rock solid mounted. Isn't that genius? Let's actually find the bottom cover. Here's the bottom cover. Another weird design quirk here. The serial numbers and that are taped to the bottom case, whereas with T440 I'm pretty sure they're taped to the the case on the inside. When you take the battery out, you're actually looking at the inside of the machine. But you know. So that's another reason why I haven't changed this bottom case, which I'd like to do. I do need to replace the bottom case because there's a missing battery clip. But I have also bought from China just the battery clip. I didn't know you could just buy the battery clip, so I'd, I thought I'd try that instead. Um, so yeah, I think that's all together. Should we just put a few of the screws in just to make sure that we're all screwed up nice and tight? Nice captive screws, but yeah, around this connector here is where the VGA connector is. Well, that screw rather than missing screw is near where the VGA connector is and yeah it keeps clicking in and out it's annoying nothing I can really do there except buy a replacement lower case but that's not worth my time or effort because this bottom case isn't that badly damaged I can live with a missing screw I just put a replacement battery clip on because I don't know why, but these this battery clip over here is always the first to vanish. Right, why? The amount of bottom cases on eBay that are like, oh yeah, it's this great condition case, but the battery clip's missing. How does that happen? How does one actually manage that? So, I also bought this. It's a 72 watt hour battery. Yep. Now I thought that my T440 had the biggest battery. It had a 48 watt hour battery when I bought it. I was like, yes, I've got an extended battery, but no. 48 watt hours is like such a baby battery. This is 72 watt hours. It's nearly double a 48 watt hour. Okay, maybe, maybe it's not nearly, but it's definitely more than 48 watt hours. So this machine now has 72 plus... 24 watt hours give or take because obviously the 24 watt hour battery we know for sure is not keeping that 24 watt hours anymore so we can now turn this on and i have guiltily i've already turned it on and installed the windows off camera and stuff so this is basically just me showing you what i've done off camera because i hadn't perfected my glorious overhead camera system and I wanted to get that ready before I tested it on such a big job. But yeah, I've got Windows 10 Pro. There you go. So I'm just going to log in here. There we go, I'm back. I had to change the wallpaper because, yeah, it had a picture of someone else on there, but there we go. There's a picture of me on a T430, and the battery estimate in the corner there says we've got six, hour, six and a half hours of battery left. So we're doing pretty good there on battery level-wise, and uh, this, this new trackpad is awful. Let's actually open Lenovo Vantage so we can see both the battery stats here together. So you can see I've installed my usual array of software on this machine, Office 2010, which is by far the best version of Office ever released. Mattermost, which is like a chat application, Firefox, I think that's the ESR version as well. Uh, I've got Spotify, because I do love a bit of music. And I'm missing a few programs there, I'm missing one though, na most notably there. I don't know where that's gone, I'm pretty sure I installed it. 
Right, so it's not showing a second battery here. Well, it's not showing as good. That's not good. I keep trying to use the bloody trackpad, but I've disabled it. Oh, there it goes. Good. So, yeah, the 72 watt hour battery only has 68 watt hours in it now. That's, mm, that's a really small discharge rate. That's done pretty good. It's only got 162 cycles over the, um, and it was it was started in 2014, so it's a five-year-old battery, and it's only lost about four watt hours there. I'm not going to install the Intel management engine for V Pro. I don't have a V Pro CPU, Lenovo. It's a bloody normal Core i5. Ugh. Yeah, what we can also see here is that the wattage that the system is actually drawing, about 15 watts. Nice, nice, nice. Not a lot at all. Let's see what the main battery is here. <laughs> Remaining percentage, 1%. Yep, yeah, this has only 18 watt hours in it. That's because it's had 617 cycles. How do you even get 617 cycles out of that little 24 watt hour battery? So yeah, it hasn't fared as well. But it's, I mean... 18 watt hours if we're using 15 watts on the machine that's about an hour and 20 minutes let's say of extra battery life that's pretty bloody good i'd say so yeah i do like to set these battery charging thresholds up To 95%. That, I mean, it's not a huge difference between 100% and 95%, but 5% saved over every charge cycle, that's a lot of difference. It will help reduce the cycle counts on the battery and ultimately help the battery health because batteries do not like running at 100%. So that's why batteries die. It's not that you charge them constantly. It's that they're at 100% all the time. Being at 100% is basically just going to deteriorate. It's going to kill itself. It's not that you're feeding current through it by charging it. It's that it's just idle. And some older computers might even keep recharging the battery. I remember when I used to use a MacBook, it, I would just watch the battery percentage fall because I always used the machine plugged in. And that's just because Apple, quite clever, they didn't charge the battery at all once it had hit 100%. So your battery percentage would actually drop as you was using the machine over a long period of time plugged into the wall. Like over a month or something. So yeah, that was quite an interesting pay. I don't know if the ThinkPads do that or not. I haven't really noticed that because I'm more mobile now. I use my laptop on battery every day now. Whereas before... I always use it on the charger. So yeah. That's about that then. That is the X240. I'm quite happy with it. So how much did this machine cost? £40 for the machine. It cost nothing to repair the screen. The RAM module was free. The... 72 watt hour battery, I think that was 30 pounds? I can't remember. I got it used, it was probably one of the cheapest ones on eBay when I looked. Because I'm frugal. The internal battery was 15 pounds. So, yep, yeah. and the SSD was 30 pounds. So we got 30, 60, about 80 pounds in parts in here. 80, 85 pounds in parts to make it work it cost us 40 pounds so yeah you can add that up and that's basically 120 pounds for all of this which i don't think is too sad especially considering these machines start about 150 pounds for a working model on ebay that it even can remotely compare to this machine this has got the backlit keyboard which is not a common option on these believe it or not and it's definitely not a common thing to find used just the keyboard 
especially considering how difficult it would be to actually get it out and the whole SSD and stuff so yeah I think I did quite good but anyway I'll see you in the next video